Thank you. Ah, oh, so nice, so nice to finally have a, a people at the other side and not a, not a screen, right? So it's uh, absolutely nice to be here. I, I, I used to be an evangelist, uh, so I, I, I was on stage a lot. And uh, it's been a long time since then, and I, I, I really get nervous nowadays. But um, it's really, really nice to be here. So my name is Fernando Guillot. I, I've been working in Telefonica for only three years. But uh, it's been a hell of a ride. It's, uh, it's, it's been incredible. And um, we're changing every day. We're doing new stuff every day. And it's making this uh, super interesting. Uh, with me here on stage is uh, Michael Gradek. He is the CEO of Dider. Um, I know you want to say something about sure, yourself. Sure. sure. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so um, I'm, I'm lucky to have the opportunity to run Dieter. It's uh, the first startup that uh, Enrique is going to, sorry, Fernando. not Enrique, Fernando <laughs> is going to mention uh, what they're working on in the venture builder. And uh, yeah, and we're just super excited to, to be a part of the whole family. Great. So yeah, Dieter is the first startup that we created inside the venture builder or the Wider Builder. Uh, Initiative. So before before I go in and start asking uh, Michael some questions, I do want to tell you what we're working on in in Waira. So probably most of you know that in Waira we had these thesis that was about fit first. So everything that was actually had some relation to what we do in Telefonica was a good investment for us. Uh, but we were leaving behind a big chunk of the, of, of, of the world without exploring. So we decided to build two new, um, two new vehicles. The first vehicle is called Wide IX, and I'm going to talk a little bit about what it, what it is and what it does. And the second one is called Wider Builder. So if you want to look, I don't have any, any slides to, to show you, but if you want to go and look, it's very easy. It's x.wider.com or builder.wider.com. So the first one, X. Why, why we started with X? So X has started, uh, Wider X has started just some months ago, not, not more or less at the same time as we were celebrating our 10th anniversary inside WIDA. And what we were trying to do, and uh, as important this, is, is try and find and invest in disruptive startups in the B2C world. Okay? And what, why was this? We wanted to get these startups and their products into our consumer, uh, into our consumer clients. Um, but there's, there's an important thing to this. So apart from being B2C, important B2C, they have to be disruptive. They can be anywhere in the world. So this is new also in WIDA. So before in WIDA, we would only invest in those, um, in those uh, startups that were born in, in our footprint. And this, we can, we can invest anywhere in the world. So that's, that's great. Uh, it has a catch, so it is important that it's full digital, fully digital startups. And why is this? Because we, we really want these startups and their products to go worldwide in all of our, our um, client eco ecosystem. So that's why at IX, we're all, we've already invested in eight startups. Um, and we're working on, on, on many more. So there is... There is um, an action for you guys if you invest, if you want to share with us your, your portfolio or, or, or your deal flow. We are really delighted to, um, uh, to work with you and invest in these type of uh, um, startups. And the second part is Wider Builder. So Wider Builder, what we saw was there's a lot of innovation going on in Telefonica. So you, you all know Telefonica is a big company, a very complex one. And uh, we were seeing that there's lots and lots of innovation going on. What does this mean? It means that everywhere around Telefonica, we are innovating, we're doing great products, we're creating patents, we're doing technology. But as we're a very complex company, Sometimes we see that these products never 
reach um, externally. So what we thought was, okay, let's look around, let's see what we can find, and if if it's interesting, let's make a startup out of this. So we 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 did that, and um, so basically what we do is we we do what I what I like to call internal. Um, evangelism so we go around the house and we and we tell everyone what we do and try and open their drawers to see if they have anything in, <laughs> inside and once we find these things what we do what we do is we have a small prototyping group where who allows us to quickly and agilely um, look into this technology or patents and see if it's worthwhile putting out in the market and if it is and obviously we we explore the uh, our competitors, we, we do all sorts of things. If we manage to find a product or a patent or a technology that we believe in, what we do is we go outside and find investors that are willing to share the risk with us uh, and, and, and be part of this with us. So we never go alone. We always try and, and go with other partners who can, who can help us make these startups um, reach a, a, a nice place. So um, with that, if, if you're an investor, if you want to see or listen to the type of things we do, so we're going to talk about DDAD, and but we do all sorts of things. So we look into IoT, we look into security, we even have a gaming, uh, a gaming startup that we've, that we've done. So that's, that's, um, that's what we do in WireIX and uh, WIDA Builder. So if you if you want to join us, we we're happy to to listen to you guys to to tell us what we're working on, and um, and it would be great to have you uh, on board. So now I don't want to talk any more about what we do in Telefonica, and I want a, a live case. And Dider is the first one we built. So we saw this technology that looked really nice, looked really promising, and we knew that it was going to die inside Telefonica if we didn't do something about it. So what we did was we, we tried to find the right team, we tried to find the right investments, and uh, we launched Dither. So um, tell us briefly, what is Dither? Sure, sure. Yeah, so thanks for being here, everyone. Um, Dither, in essence, as Fer said, um, is born out of a patent. And that patent basically allows us to do digital signature over instant messaging platforms, right? And so, you know, the potential of, of that is um, what if enterprise customers especially could sell over WhatsApp, right? So there's so many companies that invest heavily in their user acquisition, in their, um, you know, landing pages on their own apps, on, on many different things. But at the end of the day, especially enterprise companies, they're user journeys are very fragmented and they're pretty broken. It's, not, it's, it's typically not a pleasant experience to uh, you know, buy something off of a big company because they may have very complex processes to actually buy something off of them. And I'm speaking more about you know, um, these companies that you have to typically phone to get something sorted or you need to maybe go into the web or then, then go into their app or then maybe email or something, it's just, just like complex processes. And so basically what we do today is we enable our enterprise customers to cover the entire user journey from the very inception of when they acquire customers to the actual moment that they sell something to the customers, all over instant messaging. Why instant messaging? It's because it's just so much more cost efficient and so much more effective in terms of converting users, right? So that's kind of where we specialize and we use the, the, the patent. So when you talk about instant messaging, you're, you're talking not only about WhatsApp, right? So exactly. Okay. Yeah. So Primarily in Spain, it's WhatsApp. <laughs> it's WhatsApp, yeah. But we can, we can connect to any instant messaging platform that has an API. Okay. So uh, basically, you're, you're, you're doing chatbots? Uh, yeah, yeah. So how's, how's the, there used to be like this big hype around chatbots. Uh, What's the future of this now? Yeah, so Where I are think, we now? I think what happened, especially around 2015 and 16, there is a lot of hype about the AI in chatbots, right? That they'll be able to understand everything. And Google did this amazing demo about their, I think it's called Plex, where they actually found a uh, you know, barbershop or something. And, they actually, and, and that's all fine, but only Google can do that, right? <laughs> How do we make that technology more accessible to, to normal people? And then companies found that it's so hard to run AI chatbots because there is so much overhead in training them, right? So I think, 
you know, that hype has died down, and what we do is something very, very simple, and, and it's, it's by far nothing to do with AI, AI today, although I think the industry will go there in the future and it will be easier to run these AI chatbots. What we do uh, is just a much simpler version. Like, we take an intent from our customer, let's say, I want to onboard the customer, and we implement the chatbot that, that just does that very strictly. So there's no AI behind the scenes, it's just, please send me, what's your name, what's your uh, identification, your, you know, the, the name, for example, or whatever data it needs, it, it, it requires you to answer exactly right, that, right? And I think that makes the technology much more accessible. And in the future, probably, you know, technology will evolve to make it, you know, less maintenance heavy, so to speak, right? So what do you, what do you think the opportunities like today and, and obviously thinking a little in the, in the future in, in, of this sector? Yeah. I think that today, like the, even though there's a lot of hype some years ago, chatbots haven't really penetrated so deeply into, into the enterprise world. And, and for that matter, like in, into many companies, like there's so, ma so many companies that still rely you to phone. Think about all the restaurants, like how do you reserve? You can, you can go to El Tenedor and all these things, but you, you t I typically at least phone uh, uh, restaurants, right? So I think there's so much to do in terms of chatbots. And, and like I said, making them more accessible to companies is so important. Like bringing that barrier to entry down is so important. And I think that's the opportunity. You know, the penetration is so low. There's just so much to do there, right? There is, yeah, there is. And um, I don't know. I mean, there's, there's lots of challenges too, no? What, do you, what are your main challenges today? Yeah, I think, <laughs> uh, I think there's, I mean, I think companies, since this is still in its inception, companies are not very forward thinking about the opportunities that they have with chatbots. And it's so hard to, to kind of illustrate the advantages that they can, they, they can have, right? And, and so when we go selling, for example, um, we have these amazing success cases, right? Where when you see them, uh, so for example, we have this one company that we literally reduced their cost by a factor of 10. So like that's huge. <laughs> and we, we increased their conversion along the side, right? But if you just take the cost, and you think about, okay, if our sales cycle with you, our next customer is going to be one year, how much money are you going to waste by not accelerating that process, you know? And I think those are some of the, the big challenges that, that the industry faces. Yeah. And um, regarding, regarding uh, the, the future of, of, of a chat box, and I'm, I, I'm, I was thinking before about Where's your competition? Where, who, who is your competition? Do, yeah. you, do you have them <laughs> pinned out? Yeah, for sure. Um, so, I mean, our, our competition is, is kind of twofold, right? There's these companies that still do these AI chatbots, and, and they typically cater pretty well to enterprise customers, um, because I think when you sell to enterprise customer, they're attracted by the idea of AI and reducing costs in the contact center and so on and so forth. Um, but then these companies, um, they, they, turn to, they, they tend to have a lot of churn, right? So the, as it, when they see that the main maintenance is so he heavy, they have this churn. And then there's these other companies that run, you know, simpler chatbots, which in my opinion today, it's, it's the way to go. But um, the issue with those companies is that they don't really think holistically about how companies, you know, acquire and onboard uh, customers they kind of you know, implement their solution somewhere, somewhere half along the w halfway along their customer journey, and they might not get you know, all the way to the end. And whereas we think about it holistically, we go from the very beginning to the very end, and we integrate all the necessary tools that, that you need to sell. So QIC for banking sectors, um, gate payment gateways, digital signature with our, with our patents, so on and so forth. So, so, so when you were talking about um, how you engage with these customers and that you go end to end, is this like a project that you do for each customer yes. every time? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, <laughs> our, our main target are enterprise customers, um, be it smaller enterprise customers to the very big ones, and obviously, in, in my opinion, in order to do something that really works, because at the end of the day, our interest is for the, the company's customers to convert as much as possible, right? That's the ultimate goal, if you want to sell, for example. And if you want to excel at that, you have to provide a tailored solution to the, to the company, right? So 
yes, we do have a uh, technology stack which is pretty core, and we just have to design the, all the sequence of messages for that customer. And even if the customer requires some, some custom bit of integration, we do that as well. We did that with one of our best customers, and, and, and that really gives that tight integration between so many different areas that your customer can, can you know, be in, and you want to bring them onto your chatbot and then sell. It, it, it just works really, really well that way. But then uh, how are you going to scale? I mean, if you have to go deep into each customer, yeah. isn't there a way to, to okay, I've, I've nailed down this, this sector, and now this is just like, yeah. like that. Do you, do you think that's possible? It is, it is going to be a challenge, um, because I really think that um, providing tailored solutions you know, is more important than, especially in our early stages, thinking about scaling. And so, first and foremost, we want to, you know, prove that our product works exceptionally well. And then we'll think about scaling. I mean, as I said, our, our core technology is very standardized, but if a customer requires some integration, then I guess, you know, they'll, they'll just go into a pipeline of, of integrations that we need to do for customers, and we'll need to scale our integrations team and everything, right? But it's going to be a challenge for sure. But then when, w once you've, you've put it in place, uh, there's not that much man maintenance, or do you still always have to be a little bit on top of it? So on <laughs> we have this, this amazing success case um, with a customer okay. in, the retail, uh, sorry, in the real estate industry. Um, we've been already working with them for six months, and um, we had to literally not change a single thing in the chatbot since it started. We, we changed one small thing, sorry. One small thing we did change, and that was it. And so it's, it's fairly autopilot, and it, and it works like a dream. I, know, I, I like that you mentioned this, because there's, <laughs> you mentioned this customer, and, and when we were talking uh, last night about this, you, you told me that uh, you've, you've saved so much money on this customer. The, this customer has saved so much money thanks to your solution that he's opening up to other solutions, no other things that he wants to do. So tell yeah, us a little bit more about that. Exactly. So th the way we, we see how to run our business is, um, w first and foremost, we want to make sure that the customer feels that it's risk-free to try us, right? So w even though we do do custom integrations, we don't charge for them. Because we want the customer to try, at the end of the day, the product speaks for itself. So why should we charge uh, and, and provide the entry to barrier? And then have some kind of approval of budgets within the company and all that, which is not necessary. We just want to get off the ground as soon as possible. So we don't charge for integration. And then, um, basically, our business model is based on per transaction. The more we convert, the, each conversion costs X for the customer, and we charge per, basically per, per conversion. They say that we, we reduce their cost by a factor of 10 with regards to their uh, previous solution. And all of that money that they're saving since they, they don't have a new budget within the company approved for different projects, although I'm sure that now they, they would be able to approve a budget because the project is going so well. But regardless, they don't need that because they're getting all of the savings that they had from, from our solution, and they're reinvesting in new use cases uh, with us, right? So if, if today we're, we're, um, we have a very healthy MRR from this customer, I think by the, by the, by the end of the year we'll double that uh, oh, with the new use cases. That's really cool. That's really cool. So tell us a little bit more about... What other use cases do you see in the... Yeah, so um, actually, it was uh, when I came here to South Summit, I started to speak with, with a bunch of um, insurance companies. And I think insurance companies is a very, very interesting uh, opportunity because, again, they rely so much on user acquisition. Uh, and I think that, you know, the, the potential uh, that we're actually, you know, uh, testing out right now is, you know, what if you could have people... Uh, you know, click on your ads regardless of where they are, and instead of going onto a landing page, uh, you take them directly onto WhatsApp, right? And and you take them directly onto WhatsApp, and as soon as they they send the first message, you already have their phone number, which is probably the most important you know piece of information you want from a customer. Obviously, there's you know con uh, privacy consents and everything, data protection involved, but you know the super simplified vision is that. And, and I truly believe that um, you know we are going to work super, super heavily in, in working also in that direction to help customers make their customer acquisition much more efficient. 
You've talked about privacy. Oof, that, that, <laughs> is, that is a big thing. I, mean, I, I know at the beginning you said that you weren't only based on WhatsApp, but at least here in Spain, yes. it's, it's big, so it's where we are right now. Facebook doesn't have uh, that much of a good press regarding yeah. privacy. How do, how do you see this? How, how is, can this affect your, your business? Yeah, I mean, um, in my opinion, it's, it's um, in my personal opinion, like there's a, there's an amazing opportunity to, for Facebook to, to monetize their platforms in a different way. I understand why they're not doing that, and, I, and that leads to all of these, you know, privacy concerns that, that I think are super legitimate. Um, how it affects us, I mean, I'm not that concerned because ultimately, I'm, I'm speaking for, you know, for Dida right now, I'm not that concerned because ultimately, if people do decide that they're fed up with WhatsApp, with Facebook, with all, I mean, not the politics, it's really their, their policies of treating data, they'll, they'll move on to another platform, and so will we, right? Um, so that's that kind of the, the core, I think, you know, idea in my mind, but then you look at the data and, and people still use WhatsApp, right? Yeah, no, no, or and but, but, but this week, I mean, I, I think everyone's heard what happened this week, uh, all the Facebook products came down, um, and I saw lots of friends going into Telegram, I've yeah. been in Telegram for some years now, and I, I saw lots of friends joining in very fast. How, how fast do you think you can switch from one platform to another if, if your customers start asking for that? I think it's uh, it's fairly quickly. Um, yeah. I mean, it's a matter maybe of months, one one or two months, just aligning everything with the with the customer and just you know onboarding new flows on different platforms. And as people migrate to the flow to the platforms, we'll be ready to receive them. Mm -hmm. Okay. So well, hopefully we'll 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 see that. So I don't want you to talk about the patent that was the what originated this startup in the beginning. I don't want you to go deep in that because I think it's it's something that uh, we'll, we would stay here for a long time. Yeah. But I do want to uh, tell us what you think the future of of um, of Dither will be and, and how you're going to make use of this patent. To yeah, yeah, for sure. So there's so many different opportunities for us in, in this space, right? Um, there's just, the, the amount of use cases are literally infinite. If you think about different verticals, I mean, insurance, banking, real estate that we're very heavy on right now, um, telco, uh, there's just so many different opportunities in, in enterprise customers, but also SMB customers. So right now we're also thinking about products for, for restaurants, right? And how to improve their rating on these, like Google Maps and all that, which is basically how they get their reputation and get customers. We're, we're thinking about new use cases, use, leveraging uh, instant messaging platforms to help them, you know, gain reputation on, on, on these platforms. So there's, there's so many things, but also we've been speaking to, this is super interesting, we've been speaking to a, a huge logistics company in, in, in based in Europe, but they operate all over the world. And they have a, a really interesting B2B use case, which I would even say it touches on IoT more than messaging, because well, they, they have huge costs in, in, um, in infrastructure to kind of track their supply chain. And we kind of, you know, I'd say naively pitched to them, you know, why don't you do that with a cell phone instead of having these specialized PDA scanners and just send the, the scanning results all encrypted and everything over WhatsApp and, and WhatsApp or whatever messenger, right? Um, and, and you could kind of track your supply chain by receiving these messages instead of over the, the normal internet over uh, WhatsApp. Why WhatsApp? Because in many remote areas, there's not, a, especially in, in some countries, there's not a lot of 3G, 4G, and let alone 5G coverage. So these apps don't really work super well, but if you can queue that message on an instant messaging platform, then when you connect to some you know, Wi-Fi or whatever, we'll see that it was queued at that timestamp and we'll be able to track everything, right? So possibilities are endless, you know? And I, I, th I think that Dither could have, could be a player in the IoT space in the future. Oh, great, uh, that's, that's good to hear. Well, we are running out of time, but I did want to ask you one, one last question. So um, are you thinking of, of uh, opening up to new investors? Are you gonna put yourself out there? For sure, for sure. <laughs> Yeah, so um, I think that early next year, probably first quarter, we'll be raising a, a financing round. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, not right now, 
we see that our product has a lot of traction in, cer in certain verticals, and we're kind of, you know, just making sure that we find that traction in other verticals as well before, uh, before looking for, external, for a financing round. And so I'm pretty confident that, that we'll reach our, our MRR goals by the end of the year, and then next year, January, February, we'll be, we'll be searching for financing. So, um, Great, so there you, are. there you have. If, you, if you're looking into this space and you think it can be interesting, we will probably be uh, trying to lift around uh, next year. Um, that's all we have for today. I do want to, I, I already told you the, the, the URLs where you can find us. So it's x.wida.com or builder.wida.com. Anyway, if you want to invest in startups that from technology that is currently in Telefonica and that we're going to put out in the market. So it, there, there is one important thing that we, that I didn't say before is that when we build these startups, we always we never go alone, I already said that, but we always look for talent outside of Telefonica that can allow us to, to reach further. And we have an incredible team with Dither, really happy how they're, they're, they're growing and um, we'll, we'll see great things out of them. So uh, from my side, I, I think we have run out of time, but if you want to talk to us, we'll be, we'll be around for some time. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you so much. Hi. Thank you.